Um, being with that, I just, you know, got started. Uh, some things I just tell them, just try to be different, you know, try to stand out in any way or form you can, you know, just think of different things that can catch the audience, catch that camera attention to be like, oh, I want to go see this person again, or, oh, I'm a fan now, um, you know, be original, you know, with your material, um, be entertaining, you know, uh, you know, it's a, the list goes on, a lot of different advice I'd probably give someone, um, but yeah, just be different, original, to sum it all up. Different performance, energy, stage present, just a puncher, you know, someone who likes to punch. Now that's a story, you know, cause like I said, I'm still new. To be honest, I never seen myself really being a battle rapper. Like, you know how some things just come in your life, you just never expected it to happen. This was just, you know, one of those things. Um, it just kind of came about the opportunity. And I do appreciate the opportunity from FaZe, you know, giving me the opportunity. But um, it just came about. So I was a fan of battle rap before. Like, I'm still a fan of battle rap. So watch it to this day, you know, all the battles, go to events, stuff like that. So I was a fan of battle rap already. Um, I just started going to events that, you know, was happening, really getting more into it, keeping up with the battles. And it's crazy because I had rap before. So it's like, okay, I already rap. Made a couple of songs, nothing too like major. How everybody make them songs, your homie's crib, you know, in the closet or whatever, his home studio, or whatever. It was just little songs like that. So I used to can rap, get on the beat, you know, have a flow or whatever but already. So I can do that. And I was already a fan of battle rap. So I just kind of, you know, just put two and two together without really even noticing I was wanting to do this shit. I was a fan, started going. Then one of my homegirls was just like, who I was going with the battles with, she was like, you could really do this. Cause I let her hear some of my music and like, just little shit, I say like little battle bars or something. And she's like, oh no, that's hard, that's hard, you can do it. I'm like, nah, I'm just messing around. I just like to go, you feel me? I'm a fan. Like I still consider myself more of a battle rap fan than a battle rapper, you know? even though I'm a battle rapper. So she was just like, you need to do it, you should do it. She was like, I got a friend who got his own lead, I can just put in the word, but it's up to you. And I was just hesitant at first. I'm like, no, I just want to just keep going to the battles. She connected me with FaZe and everything and got everything going and everything, you know, took off from there. All these back-to-back -back battles and face-offs and, you know, all this is still a learning experience, definitely still new to me. Uh, I'm just trying to learn as I go. The battle rap uh, journey, it was, you know, unexpected, but I like where I am now, you know. Really didn't, ex wasn't expecting it at first. Never even thought about it, but now that I've touched it and seen what I can do, I, I'm like, you know, I like where it's going, so. I'm, uh, I'm gonna keep riding this train, pause if necessary. <laughs> you know, see where it goes, see where it can take me. I gotta go with it. my first and only son being born, you know, got to. Um, and just like with him in battle rap, he wasn't, you know, expected, like, we wasn't, he wasn't playing or anything, but he's, you know, now he's here and we love him, you know, he got to. So, biggest achievement, probably just being a father, not even being a father, but just being an active father as a black man in this society and, uh, stereotypes we get when you, you know, also experienced that in your life, you know, where you didn't really have a father figure that much as you would like as a kid. So just trying to change that stereotype. So I say being a father, an active father in my son's life and really making a change and impact on him, that would probably be my biggest achievement in life. So how I prepare for battles, um, to just get in that mode, my mind, in that battle rap mode. Um, sometimes I would, like I said, I'd go to battles and actually watch them live to just get that energy, that feel, to see what to do, what not to do, how they get in the crowd, you know, going and stuff like that. 
you know, that just gets the energy going for me. Watch battles as well. New battles that's come out. I even go and watch some of my old battles that I've recently done to uh, get me prepare because I like to see, you know, what I did wrong on this, what I did right on this, okay, what I need to do better, what I need to cut out. Also, of course, you know, go and watch that opponent's footage and study him. Um, and also like listening to music on car rides, listening to music, you know, getting in that vibe or feel. You never know what you might hear that kind of catch your, okay, I can, you know, do this. Not necessarily take the bar or whatever they say verbatim, but it can be something that clicks in your head that can make you think of something else of what he said, you know. And what's crazy, another thing is I do, when I'm in the car driving, I'm just looking at every different place, store, sign, car, everything. I'm looking at it because it's going to be something that kind of just, oh, I can use this for this. I can use that for that. I done just did it so many times. My first battle with Sincere driving, I seen a Home Depot, just the Home Depot. And I was like, bro, why the fuck is the T silent in Home Depot? And so I just came with a bar, like these tools, put niggas on T's in silent, like Home Depot type shit. And that's just some shit I seen just driving and I seen just, you know, it just be little shit like that I prepare. And when I battle vibe and shit, I was riding and I seen a Captain D's, Captain D's. This nigga DJ who I just battled, who's with Vibe and them, I know he gonna be on his side. So I'm like, I can come up with like a Captain D bar for him, man. I did that in my uh, Vibe battle. I was like, what the fuck I say, you join them fishy niggas, now you think you the Captain D type shit. So a little shit like that, I try to just, every little thing I can take in to make a bar, I'm gonna, uh, you know, try to use that. So that's how I really, you know, prepare for a battle. Oh shit. <laughs> I'm a procrastinator at times. I can't even, I ain't even gonna lie. Like some things I get done, but it'd be some things I wait to the last minute and be like, hey, damn, I need to get this shit done. Whether it was bills, cars, work. Um, I'll be waiting to the last minute to do this shit sometimes when I really need to just get on that shit. I'd say that's probably like one of, the, one of my bad habits. I mean, nothing too, you know, major than that. Probably like the movies, out to eat, or uh, one of them down in theaters, you know, but definitely somewhere out to eat. Uh, I'd say like a Olive Garden, Red Lobster, really just depends on who the girl is for real. And if I'm feeling them like that, you know, that is gonna determine where we going. But it'll be, it'll be something nice, nothing too fancy. I don't know, first date, cause I know I'm gonna have to pay. You feel me? So, hell no, nah, cause I don't know what's gonna happen after this first date, you might just, Wanna get a free meal and go to the next nigga for the day, like, so. It just depends on the girl and shit, for real. Definitely family gonna make me smile, you know. That always puts a smile on my face, saying, my little man smile makes me smile, you know, every time. So, I say family, um, hanging out with the, the gang, the bros. Uh, battle rap, playing sports, you know, that always puts a smile on my face. Just being in my element and being around my friends and family, that always gonna put a smile on my face. Uh, you know, what scares me the most? Mm. That's, that's a tough question, asking the man. What scares you, you know? We, we supposed to ain't scared of nothing, you know? We are gonna take on everything. Probably just losing your village around you. Very close people. They don't even have to be family members. Just having that support you have around you and just losing them, like, they're going like that, that scares me the most because that's something you're going to really have to deal with and go through life after they're gone. So it's just, that's tough to, that's a hard pill to swallow. I would say that would probably be the only thing that really scares me. Hmm. I mean, growing up, of course, you got a lot of birthday gifts and shit. 
games, clothes, shoes, toys. I gotta go with, I guess, probably getting like my first car. And cause I didn't have to pay for it, you know, that was a, a blessing in itself. It wasn't nothing fancy or, you know, you know, a little 95 Honda, but it's a car, you know. You just need something to get you to point A to B when you, you know, get your first car. So that would probably have to be you know, one of my best gifts, just receiving my first car and I didn't have to pay for it. Nah, I wasn't named that for someone, but my younger brother is named after my dad. We all have the same uh, middle name, so my dad name is Avery. And I got an older, older brother named Kadero. I'm the middle, he named me Aubrey, and he named the third Avery Jr., so AJ. So, um, but, so it's Avery, Aubrey, and another Avery. And all our middle names are Michael. That's why they be like, A-B, A-B. Yeah, not really named after someone, but it just, you know, all kind of comes together in a way. So, something different, you know. My favorite food, I know this is gonna be like weird. I'm gonna go, my favorite food is pancakes. Some good old pancakes, old fashioned pancakes. Like, I know that shit seemed like, damn, I ain't never heard nobody favorite food pancakes, but just growing up a lot, I was always over at my grandma's house. And every time we spend the night, every time we spend the night, the next morning, she making pancakes with the Angel Mima syrup and all that. She cut it up for you. What? Every time. So I'm always good with pancakes. And what food I liked and hated, or I tried and hated, it probably sushi. I tried that shit. That shit was nasty. Like, all that, most of that shit I don't even really be trying, but I was with somebody that was like, just try it, try it. I'm like, I'm not eating like that, no raw fish. Like, I'm not eating none of that shit. None of that octopus, no frog legs, none of that. I'm not trying it, that shit is nasty. Yeah, probably sushi. I got a couple of them. Probably like wasting my time. If I'm coming to give you a ride and take you somewhere in my car and my gas and you not outside, we not supposed to be outside and I'm waiting five, 10 minutes, I'm be like, I could be doing other stuff. I got stuff to do, you know? But I say like, yeah, time, like just be on time. If something happens, just say that or I'm gonna be a little late. If I gotta be here by this time, just get me there or however the situation is. And probably just repeating myself a lot. Like if I told you to do this by this time and you still haven't did it's like, like what you doing? And then I'm gonna get annoyed and be like, fuck it. You know, like, but yeah, I probably said those my two pet peeves. Just one item at all times. <laughs> you gotta have your phone on you. I mean, you don't need it, but like, there's so much you use it for, you know? You can now pay for shit on your phone. Go to the store, tap pay, if I don't got my wallet, boom. Make calls, send messages, send money, receive money. Like, your phone, that's your bread and butter right there. Like, that's one, that's one of your money makers, if you think about it. Broke down, you gonna make a call. Or you know, on the street, you're gonna have to make a call. So, definitely the phone be that number one item. Okay, hold on. I can only have one, like for the rest of my life. Like, I can't go back or forth. It's just one, and that's it. I can't have the other. That's it. Damn. I'm gonna go. So, which one I want, right? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with pussy for sure, cuz. As men, you know, we need that. I mean, we, yeah, I, I need that too, but I can still drink and shit, you know? I can still vape and shit. I can still smoke a black shit. Edibles, is, was, are we doing that? What we doing? <laughs> Pussy for sure, got to. <sighs> Come on now, natural. For sure. Ain't nothing like a natural, fine grown Georgia peach. Steak. I'm a grown ass man. Mmm, <laughs> mmm, mmm. 
you gonna make me choose between our beautiful black queens. Uh, uh, uh. I'm gonna choose though, respectfully. I love all women, all shades, all colors. But between dark skin and light skin, I love me a dark skin girl. That chocolate, ooh. But it's just something about them light skins. Like, not all light skins is just like that, but if you catch the right light skin, who's, what? Like one of them Lauren London types, Christina Milian, for sure, they bad. So I'm gonna have to go with light skin over dark skins, respectfully, yo, respectfully. Cause there's some dark skins that's be crazy too. Oh, uh, I just want to be remembered, you know, as a good, hardworking father, you know, um, who was always, you know, helping people out, doing the right thing, you know, family man, being there for his child, uh, made people happy, you know, stuff like that. Uh, probably what I would, you know, like to be remembered for, you know, when it all comes down to it at the end of the day. Be there for my son. Raise him to be the better man than me. It, you know, it's smoke this month, so April 27th, tune in or pull up for this battle, for this card. You know, it's gonna be lit. Uh, fire battle, I'm ready, I'm excited uh, for everything, for the league. So where we going, uh, it's gonna be a movie. So yes sir, Arby Graham versus Camo. I'm finna kill that nigga, for sure. But yeah, it's up.